Porsche 928's electrical system is a very complex affair, and the factory radio, speaker, and amplifier system uh, contributes to that. In this video, I'm going to show you how to simplify the wiring by installing a modern Bremen SQR46DAB stereo and Bluetooth receiver combined with a modern Sony amplifier designed to replace the original Blaupunk unit. Stay tuned. <laughs> So with the restoration of the dashboard and center console complete in Project Risky Business, my 85 Porsche 928, I thought it would be a crime to put in the, the stereo receiver there that came with it. It's personal preference. I'm sure I'll get uh, comments, but I generally do not like the look of modern stereos in a vintage 928. They tend to be stuck further out from the dash and that combined with the, the, the fancy colors and everything that a lot of these decks have now. It just doesn't look right in an 80s vintage car. Blaupunk apparently uh, got some customer feedback because just before the pandemic, they launched the Bremen SQR46DAB. Now, if you're not familiar with this deck, it is a Bluetooth unit. It looks very much like the Blaupunk decks Porsche supplied with the car when new. However, what looks like a cassette door actually hides an extra USB port, an auxiliary port, and an SD card slot. This radio provides Bluetooth capability with a microphone, so I was able to add that functionality into the car. But the overall goal was to make the center console look like it still has the factory Blaupunk radio. As this is the case with any project I've tackled so far in Project Risky Business, the radio was no, was no picnic either. However, much of it was on, on me. Going back probably 30, maybe even 40 years now, I've always relied on Crutchfield for all of my stereo components. And this one was no exception. But for a few dollars more, Crutchfield gives you a phone number to call for tech support, and they, uh, more often than not, help uh, out tremendously. What Crutchfield also does is recommend what components you need if you pick a stereo to put in the car. So one of them was this floating ground adapter. I ended up not needing this. This is designed to, on common ground speaker systems, such as the one that came in the 928, uh, that's designed somehow to integrate the modern radio with that speakers. I'll get into why I didn't end up needing this. So what I'm showing here is mistake number one. And it's, it's basically on me. This has nothing to do with Crutchfield, nothing to do with the radio or the car. Crutchfield had recommended all this equipment. I just went ahead and started soldering everything together. Huge mistake. And I'll get into it in a little bit. Always, if you're putting in a radio, do your connections loosely first. And then once you know everything's working, that's when you can go back and solder and shrink tube everything together. I, I easily wasted the better part of a day because I didn't do that first. So before I go to install anything, I've got to disconnect the ground cable on the battery, which is located in the rear hatch area. This is the, the nest of wires that whoever put the, the uh, aftermarket Blaupunk radio before, this is how they decided to put it in. It, it did work, uh, but with the other things going on in the console, uh, you'll see I simplified this wiring. So, But at first, I'm trying to figure out where the ground wire is, the constant power, and here I am going to town soldering uh, things that didn't need it. Now, so after a couple of hours of soldering things all together, this was the result I got. So nothing more disappointing than hooking everything up, having soldered, shrink-tubed everything, prematurely because now I had a problem with the sound. After going back and forth uh, with Crutchfield tech support, the problem is, was probably the nearly 40-year-old amplifier. And if you're not familiar with the location, it's actually put under a trim piece between the passenger seat and the, and the passenger side door. There's the, there's the amplifier in my hand, and I'm actually disconnecting the speaker leads from the amplifier and plugging in a speaker 
directly into those leads with using pigtails and testing it. And sure enough, with the new Blaupunk hooked up, not connected to the amp, I, I quickly realized that the, the sound was coming, the, the, the clicking was coming from the amplifier. So what to do? Well, now I needed to find an amplifier that would fit in the panel. Sure, I could have gone big, but I'm all about the factory look in the interior. So it was critical for me to find an amplifier that would fit it underneath the original trim piece that goes against the rock, passenger side rocker panel. Through Crutchfield's help, I did find what's uh, a Sony 400XD amplifier. Very small footprint. The requirements I needed were at, uh, close to the watts per channel that the factory amplifier put out. This one has 40 watts across four channels and needed to have speaker level outputs. After we decided on that, um, it really meant that I could simplify the wiring. I, going this route with the amplifier and using RCA cables to hook the Blaupunk Bremen directly to the amplifier meant that I eliminated a lot of the uh, speaker wiring. It meant that I eliminated this wiring here. And if you're not familiar with this, this is the factory wiring. And you see it here. There's three things. On the side, on the driver's side, on the driver's side uh, rocker panel next to the emergency brake is a knob with a speaker on it. And that was from the factory, oddly enough, is, is, was the speaker balance for the factory Blaupunk units. Now, why they did that back then, who knows? But with the modern unit already having a balance control on the deck, it just didn't make any sense to have that knob. Would have liked to have kept it just for the thing, but what and you see here is the wiring that goes from that knob into the harness by the center console. All of this, at some point when somebody put the aftermarket CD radio in, this is what they did to circumvent the, um, all the wiring that goes into that rheostat that handled the, um, the volume. So you can see that I think there's like 12 pins to that switch. Very complicated thing. Eliminating that volume control and going with RCA inputs for the amplifier greatly simplified the wiring for the um, stereo unit. Now all I had to do was run patch cables from the center console, from the back of the radio, from the center console to the amplifier. Most of that RCA wiring was, is tucked under the carpet behind the passenger seat, very, very stealth. And then on the, in the center console, more importantly, I minimized the wiring behind there because there wasn't a lot of room to begin with. Here I am actually putting the Sony unit in and you see the preamp outputs and this time I got smart taped everything so in the center you see the the RCA inputs so I've, I had some RCA cables laying around they're not easy to find anymore so I had a pair sitting in my uh, junk drawer and then coming out the side I was able to use the the speaker level outputs to connect to the factory uh, wire pairs and that's just methodically working and making sure I'm hooking up the right speaker pairs. Now, moving further down, you can see I've shrink tubed everything and uh, soldered it. I didn't show that part of it out of it. Now the trim cover fits in and you can see me stuffing uh, the preamp outputs into that unit. This is a shot of this wiring I told you about. So I realized not, all of this wiring was no longer needed. So why not pull it out while the carpet was out? There were some extra wires that no longer needed from the old aftermarket radio, and I'm using shrink tubing to cap those off. At this point, all I needed was constant power, switch power, and I decided to use a new ground. You can see much, much simpler wiring now. Tied those off. That's the new deck, and, that, and here I am just soldering a few wires here. But there you go. That's basically the wiring that... Uh, the simplified wiring from that rat's nest I had earlier. The yellow is constant power, the red is switch power, and then of course, um, um, can't see it easily, but I, I did connect the black wire to a ground wire that I found a new place to put a ground wire in. Much simpler. And once I was com uh, confirmed all the wiring was working good, the sound was decent, now I could move on. 
and put it in the account center console. The trickiest part is getting all the HVAC wiring in and then moving once I had all of that in and the, of course the power switches for the windows at the end of the console. Now I'm threading through the radio wiring and I routed the preamp output or the, the, I routed the RCA up through the side of the console and through the dash there. So now I'm slowly trying to get the the recovered console back into place with all of those switches in place. And then once I was satisfied it was positioned right. I put the you know connect the rear USB cable, the antenna, and then the pre the RCA outputs for the um, amplifier. At this point, I did not bolt down the center console, and I'll get into that towards the end here. We've done radios, it's always about finagling, but then once once you've finagled the wiring through, um, it slides in, and. And here I am just uh, putting the USB cable in and routing that underneath the driver's side of the center console. Now for even more stealth, if you're familiar with the center console on these cars, very shallow. It's almost a useless console. However, it's the perfect height to put your iPhone in. So I routed the cable just to spare um, iPhone jack cable from the back of the head unit to the center console. I drilled a hole in the bottom of the center console and have the have the uh, iPhone cord in there. So when I'm driving now, I can just have the phone tucked away. It's charging, it plays the music, and uh, it's pretty good. Cool. Unfortunately, I have another electrical problem now, and you heard it in the opening sequence where there's a, even though the door is closed, you still hear a, 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 a muted buzz. I don't, and for some reason, it was after I put the radio in and everything was back together, it worked fine. But a couple days later, all of a sudden, the clock was out. If you watched an earlier video, I repaired the clock, and none of the dome lights in the car work. So I have a wiring issue. The next video I'm going to do will figure out how to get rid of that annoying buzz. I purposely did not cover the speakers in this video. My main concern was getting the radio back in and the console and our car back together so we could drive it again. We've succeeded in that. One of the other things I learned during this is the passenger side rear speaker is blown. Uh, that combined with the the tiny, almost useless speakers in the rear deck um, that are, are just shot. The paper is exposed to UV light back there. Those two pair of speakers I'm going to uh, replace in an upcoming episode when I go to uh, restore those body panels. Uh, the front door speakers seem to sound fine. I don't see a need to um, upgrade them. I think they were upgraded at some point and they still sound decent, so going to leave it alone. Probably the only thing I'm going to do is on the driver's side grill, uh, repaint it so that it looks uh, um, as good as new. Appreciate your patience. While it took a long time for me to get this video together, appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this video and haven't done so, I encourage you to subscribe. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to comment below and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you.